Right, uh, just before we start then, we have got a console application here. So you may want to create one of those. And I have put this segment of code in the description so you can copy and paste it in and basically start with what we have here. What we're going to cover today is methods. Okay, methods in C sharp, however it will, or functions, depending on what you want to call them. It will give you a generic overview of what they look like, how to use them, what they are. And that will also help you if you're looking at any other programming languages or you're doing anything that involves .NET, so maybe you're doing some PowerShell, you'll see stuff here that'll, that'll twig for when you're doing stuff in other languages. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just dive in. A method is essentially maybe one or hundreds of thousands of lines of code that are given sort of a, a title, a name, where you can call them. All right? We identify a method by the fact that it has a couple of brackets. So write is actually a method that belongs to the console class. All right? So we can pass this write method some data, and in the background, it'll do a lot for us to write that text on the console line. There's quite a lot going on in there. It involves memory and you know, initialize and stuff to do with the graphics card and whatnot, just to write that text on the screen. We don't need to know how to do that. We just need to know how to call the method that will do that for us and tell it what we want it to say. So that's pretty much the advantage of methods. You can write something super complex or super repetitive and just call it every time you need it. So instead of having reams and reams of the same bit of code over and over again, you can write it once in a method and just call it every time you need it. Okay? So... Another method then is the read line method, and we can identify it by the fact it has a couple of braces, even if they have nothing in them. And again, it belongs to the console class. And read line will take the data from the console window when we present it and stuff it in the first name. All right, and that does a few bits for us. It passes it around, puts it in memory, puts it in with that reference. It does a lot for us that we don't need to know how to do. So what we'll do is we'll just finish looking through this at the other methods we can see. Then we'll make our own. All right, so we've already talked about read line. Here, int, so int32, the int alias, has got a parse method. And what that will do, if we pass it some data, it will attempt to convert that to parse it as an integer. So if we were to input the number 47 in, in the console, which, although it's a number, would originally be treated as a string, this parse method will attempt to make it an integer and store it in our int age. Because as you can see, we've got an integer up here called age. If we were to put in a word like hello, it would crash. We haven't done any error handling. It would just say it couldn't do it, basically. We've also got the format uh, method, which belongs to the string class. What string format will do is replace these in order with these. So it replaces that curly bracket zero with whatever stored in first name, which we set up here, and it is stored here. Okay, so it takes that data and puts it here, and same with last name. So if we were to put in, you know, Tom Brown, it would say Tom space Brown, because there's a space in there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear this screen. What we're going to do now, make sure you have got the console application sitting there ready, and you've got that code pasted in. We're going to make our own method. This is a very simple program that's going to ask the user for their first, their last name, and their age, store them in some variables, build a little sentence out of it, and that's basically it. Do a little bit of concatenation. Now, obviously this isn't difficult, but we need something fairly simple just to show us how methods work. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to step out of static void main. Now, we're going to use an access modifier, which is going to be the word public. Then we're going to use the word static. Now, I don't expect you to know what access modifiers are or what static does just yet. They are two things we are going to cover in the classes and objects video when we're talking about stuff like encapsulation. Okay, so don't worry about them too much. Just know for now, while you're practicing, we can use public static in this particular one. Now, we do need to then state the return value of the method. Now, this could be anything from a boolean, a string, an integer, or the word void which means technically, even if you put stuff on the screen, it's not going to return a value, okay? And I'll show you later on how to return a string, and that'll make a lot more sense. What we need next is the name of the method. So we're just going to call this introduction. Oops, spell it right. Then you do your two braces, which tells us it's a method. Then we go on the next line and open our code block. All right, so we should have something that looks a bit like this. Now we're going to take this code earlier. Don't forget it's in the description. We're going to cut it and paste it into our method. 
And then in our static void main, if we were to run this program now, which I will do, Control F5, you'll probably see that absolutely nothing happens. It just, it's finished straight away. And that's because there's nothing in our static void main. Even though there's all that code underneath here, that's actually a method we haven't declared. All right, it's been initialized, it's been set up, but we need to actually use it. So let's do that. Back in our static void main, all you need to do is say the name of the method, stick in the braces, and do a semicolon. So now if we do Control F5, it's going to run us through our program. Okay. And there you go. So that has ran through this, which granted is not a complex program. However, that could have been something incredibly complex. It could have been thousands of lines of code. It could have been something that you're just doing a lot in the same program and you want a, a neat way to repeat it. So for example, let's say in a game, you might have a reload method and every time someone presses R, it's going to reload. You don't want to have to have reams of code for every time you want you to put a reload in your game. You just wanted a method that could be called whenever you pressed R, it would run the, that code for you. Okay, it'll play a certain animation, it'll play a certain sound. Now, that's just the very, very beginning of what we can do with, with methods. We can make it so we can pass them data and we can make them so they can return data. So what I'll show you first is how to actually pass it some data, how to add some parameters. So let's say we didn't actually want to ask for the first name. Let's just comment that out. So the shortcut for that, if you hold control, press K, then press C, and it'll do a comment on whatever you've got highlighted. Okay. So that is going to cause us an error here. Don't worry about that. And I would like us to get rid of this string first name. So we're also going to comment that out. So now there's no way that first name is getting asked during this method's execution. What we will do, however, in the brackets for where we declared the method, we're going to say there's going to be a string passed to it, and we'll call that string first name. Okay? Now, what I'll do is I'll just delete this just so we get IntelliSense back. If we do introduction again in our static void main and open brackets, it'll tell us in this little pop down that it's actually expecting us to put in a string that's going to go in this first name variable we declared. So what I'll do is I'll just say, oops, spell it right, spell it right, semicolon, no longer an error. And what this does is it takes the value we've just passed to it and it will store it in this string and then it will use it throughout this program. So it will use it there. So if I do control F5, we should get exactly the same result as before, except it's not going to ask for our first name because we commented it out. So let's just put somewhat random. It's still going to ask us for our age, but see how it's been able to use the Anthony we passed it because it was stored in first name and it was used later on. All right. So there are other ways we can do this so we can add more data. So maybe we don't want to ask for the age during this bit. So let's comment that out. So again, highlight it, hold control, press K, press C. And to uncomment, it's K then U. Okay, let's comment out where we do the age down here. Oops, both lines. K, C. And then let's add the integer to this particular section here. So we put a comma after first name. We tell it what data type we're expecting. And then we give it a name. And that's it. And you can do that for as often as you want. You can add as many as you want. Now that has told us up here that we're expecting, if you look there, string first name int age. So we need to put a comma and then pass an integer. Note that if I was to put this in quotes, which would make it a string, we're going to get a problem because it knows it's expecting an integer. So let's just delete that and delete that. Now, if I was to run this, it'll get exactly the same result as before, except it won't ask for the age and it won't ask for the first name because we're actually passing it those parameters. A bit like when you do write or write line from the console and you pass it some details, it will use that within its program. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll actually make a method that returns a string, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this void, so telling it that it returns nothing, with the word string, which now means it returns a string. We are going to get an error because we haven't told it what to return. So what we'll do is we'll actually, let's have a look, go to the bottom of this line of code here, and we'll just do return. And let's just return, it has to be a string, so let's return full name, as that is a string, 
we declared here that we do populate, so we might as well pass that back. And all that means when we actually return a value, if we were to run this, it would get exactly the same result. But what we can do now is we can make a string, let's call it um let's call it foo, whatever. And we can do foo oops equals. And what that means is when this passes back full name, it'll actually store it in foo. So what I'll do is just to prove a point. Oops. Console.writeline line packets. The value of foo is right. So what we've done there is we've said there's a string called foo, and foo is equal to whatever string is returned from this particular value. We also pass this particular method a string and an integer. So that's what happens here. And we use them throughout this, which we then populate full name. And then later on, we return full name. So let's just run this with control F5. So again, it's not asking for full name because we passed it in the method. So let's just make some up. So we didn't have to pass it an age either. Uh, sorry, we didn't have to fill in our age because we already passed it when we said 25. So as you can see, Anthony Timmons, you're a 25 year old. The value of foo is Anthony Timmons because we returned that particular value. Now we can do that with integers. You could return booleans, anything like that. Now, these are mandatory items that you must put in your method. So if you've stated that there's going to be a string first name, it's expecting a string. It won't work if you don't put one in. But you can, however, have optional parameters as well. So what you can do to make a parameter optional, and an optional parameter can either be the only parameters or it must go after all mandatory ones. So let's have our two mandatory ones and a comma. And let's say we have a bool. Let's say it's called male and it's equal to true. So the way you make a, a value optional, a parameter optional, is by saying what it equals straight away, by actually defining what its default value is if you were to run this without stating what it is. So what we'll do is we'll add to console.write, so where we're saying our age and stuff, and say you are male, question mark, and then we'll just put the value of male. All right, so we'll just tag that on there. So this is basically going to say at the moment true because we're passing it nothing else. So it has got what's called two overloads now. The first overload is if we just fill out the mandatory details. The second overload is if we fill out the mandatory details and the optional details. Okay, so if I just do Control F5, where's my last name? Anthony Timmons, you're 25 years old. You are male, true, because we stated here that that is true. And we've still got our value of foo. So we'll just comment that out for now, just for ease. All right, and we'll actually change this into a right line so it's a bit neater. So what we can do, though, is we can actually do a comma after our 25. And this little key that pops down again, like it did earlier, that told us we need a string and then an integer, has told us in square brackets that we can put a bool. Now, square brackets basically tell us that's optional. We don't have to put it. So we could say false. And if we run this again, again, it's only going to ask for our last name. Anthony Timmons, you're 25 years old. You are male. False. So in a very quick succession, you've seen how to declare a method, how to declare a method with parameters, how to declare a method with parameters and optional parameters, as well as how to call that method, how to do a return from that method. Now, that's just the basics. We've only just sort of started to scrape into it. There is a lot more than that, especially when we start looking at classes and objects. But hopefully, that's shown you enough that you can go and play with it yourself and have a little bit of a go with it. Um, just generally mess about with it. So play around with what we've got here, try different return types, try creating your completely own methods, um, and, and try having a go at doing optional and non-optional parameters. So basically just mess about with it. If you've got any questions about this, let me know. But this has just been a nice quick video to just show you how to start taking advantages of methods in your programs.